making a bit of a pig's ear of this. Right, there's quite a lot of resin on this. I have a feeling I've stuck my boards to everything, but... Oh, shit, because neither of these look like granite now. Welcome to the Narrow Boat that James built. Hope you're well, thanks for joining me. Uh, this has had a couple of days now to fully cure, and it's much better uh, than the first one, but it's still far from... Well, it's far from perfect, but I say, it's, to be honest, it's far from good. In terms of the overall piece, it's a definitely a lot less dusty than the first piece I did, so that's worked. Um, I can obviously make improvements in like the cleanliness around me from even when I did this side. Um, I can mask off everything, I can put dust sheets around, I can kind of make a like a spray booth, if you like, um, and try to keep it as dust-free as I can. But the concern I've got is that if this was to be on the face side, and I'll keep it like this, there's these little bubbles here. I'm not sure if that, see that's not an air bubble, that's grit, I can feel that. But some of them are air bubbles. And obviously, um, out of the 10,000 people that watched the last video, I think 30,000 people said to make sure you use a blowtorch on it. I did say that I would, um, I've got one. Um, so that will help eliminate some of the air bubbles. But that's not my concern at the moment. My concern is that when I put the coat on the top, which is quite uh, translucent in a way, it's got pigments in it, but you will be able, I reckon you're going to be able to see the, what, that lump there through the next coat of resin. I don't think it's going to make a bump because the next resin will kind of skim over it, but it's going to look weird. And all of these little bumps are going to look weird certainly in gloss um so my plan was always to do a couple of tests before i put on the main pour to work out what you know how it really works okay well that's made it uniform in terms of its kind of the surface that the resin would be going on and obviously it's made it matte um, but compare that to the kind of glossy bumpy surface well essentially that's what I've got to do I've got to compare what the matte primer would be like compared to a glossy primer and see what that's like on the finished product what I don't want to do, the last thing I can do really is to pour on all the resin and no matter what surface I finish with, whether it's gloss or matte, you can see imperfections in the base of it. Okay, so but for me to check that, basically I need a similar type of size, put the, put the gloss on it, let that cure for a couple of days and then pour on the main coat and then spot the difference really. But I'm gonna to try to make this pour, this next bit I've gotta do, really as kind of perfect as I can. Um, so I'm gonna tape up the environment and then once it's set, I'm gonna put something over it, which is what I do on this thing. I've gotta rig something up so I can just cover it and leave it. Right, I've protected the surface from having any dust land on it as much as I can. Well, you've just caught me doing some finishing touches to the Bethnal Green on this Slow Patrol mug. Uh, I've still got two more colours to put on and two coats of Bethnal Green. So each mug is taking an absolute age. I've massively underestimated the size of this project too. However, I do have resin drying on the other boat, so I do have some time to kill. Um, but I have an apology to make to the handful of people that have thus far bought a ticket to win this or one of the other 19 Slow Patrol mugs, which I'm still yet to paint, um, or a warning to those that might be considering spending £2.50 on a raffle ticket to win possibly even this mug that I'm holding now. Don't. Do not buy a raffle ticket to win this or one of the other mugs if you want it to be a mug. And to those that have bought a ticket so far, I'm sorry. Uh, I told you that 
you could sit there and enjoy a beverage in slow patrol colours forever. And you can't. Um, these mugs must not be used as mugs. What I should have said, the legal definition is, if you have 11 fluid ounces of general tat hanging around somewhere that you would like to store somewhere, then this 11 fluid ounce storage beaker might just be your answer. It will be decorated in slow patrol colours and it has a handle on the side for moving said 11 fluid ounces of tat from one area of your house to another area. That tat might be old batteries, it might be coins, it might be screws and bolts and nuts. It's really up to you, whatever you use it for, but you must not use it as a mug. I can't vouch for how this paint is gonna react in your dishwasher, so don't put it in there. I can't vouch for how this paint's gonna react in a microwave, so don't put it in there. I can't vouch for how this paint's gonna react in your mouth, so don't put it in there. But I can vouch for the fact that if you want 11 fluid ounces in a easy to use portable storage container, then this is your answer. It doesn't come with a lid. So if you want to access the 11 fluid ounces of tat at any time, it's so easy. Just reach in and grab, well, the stuff at the top is easy to reach. The stuff at the bottom, you'd have to tip the whole thing out all over the table, search around for it and then scoop it all back in. And then just again, pick it up and move it anywhere around your house that you need. It really is the answer you're looking for if you already have loads of other drinking vessels. So if you wanna win this uh, or one of the other 19, then please click on the link in the description of this video, buy yourself a raffle ticket, the raffles this Sunday and best of luck. Let's see what the difference is. This has had nearly 24 hours. Yeah, that is, uh, that is better. These are the two pieces I'm gonna be testing. Um, this is just the base coat as it should be, and this is the base coat uh, matted down. So I've sanded it back to 120 grit all over. It's pretty smooth. It's got enough of a key for the resin to take on it. And on this one here, um, obviously there's quite a few dots where there's a bit of grit uh, still. So even though I, prepared it and covered it as much as I could. It's still not perfect by a long way. Um, so I'll be interested to see what happens with that and see how visible some of those larger ones are. Um, I rewatched the video yesterday and phoned the company uh, just to double check. I've got to key this up. So I've got to sand this back to 120 grit, which is going to put in a whole, when I started sanding this one back, I saw it. So it's going to put in a whole load of, basically, as you'll start to see, a whole load of scratches. Um, it will help flatten off some of the bits. I don't want to take off too much. I'm just literally giving it a key with 120 grit paper. Um, I could use an orbital, but they say don't because you know you can take off a bit too much. But the thing I'm concerned about is are all of these scratches gonna be visible when the main pour goes on? Because from the look of it now, you'd think it would be. Because the main pore is not as black as this. The, you don't even use any of that black pigment. You can't see it there. This is all the stuff I'm using. And it's this black graphite kind of shimmer. Um, and it makes it translucent. So it's not even, you know, a full blacking out of the color. Which is why I'm nervous as to whether these marks left by the sandpaper are gonna be pretty visible. The video that I've seen do it on, on their YouTube channel, uh, which I'll link to in this video, they, um, they used it on the Carrera White marble kit, uh, which is obviously white, so those scuffs are less visible on white, but look at that, that's mad. Right, now I need to clean it off with a clean microfiber cloth. Wipe off all that residue. Uh, 
and now I need to mask it all off and put a dam around it. Uh, so for this resin, for this surface rule, kind of coating resin to be self-leveling, uh, it's only self-leveling if you put enough on and it's got to be a coating basically of two mil thick uh, for it to start to self-level. So the dam I put on doesn't want to follow the contour of the, uh, of the profile edge. What it wants to do is stand proud, um, creating that dam, and it's got to be kind of at least two mil. And then the idea is you peel it off at the end, or not at the end, kind of after, once all the resin's kind of half set, um, and it rolls down that edge. That's the theory anyway. So let's mark this up. And you want to double up on it to kind of make it a little bit stronger. Right, before I get started, I'll just show you all the kit I'm going to be using. This is the Glass Cast 3 coating resin. Uh, so I've got the resin and the hardener. I've got a couple of jugs for mixing up the main coat. Uh, and I've got three smaller containers here for mixing in some of the colours. Uh, and three colours I'll be using are stone, bronze and gold. And they're made up from these, which is, I've got here a black graphite shimmer powder. Uh, and that's used for the main, for the main kind of base mix. Um, this is a bronze shimmer powder. That stuff is so fine. Uh, got white uh, kind of, uh, this is just the pigment. And I've got a gold pigment. And mixing all them together should make these three colours here. So stone, bronze and gold. Uh, and obviously the main the main mix will be kind of a clear black. It's kind of opaque. Uh, got weighing scales. Uh, got my blowtorch and a lighter at the ready. I've got a mixer. I've got a notch spreader for moving it all about. I've got a brush for mottling it all, kind of and blending the colours. I've got my two worktops all ready to go. I've got some light coming in as well, which means I can see any imperfections and make sure everything's coated. Uh, I've got my tape on there with my tab so it's easy to take off. Uh, should be good to go. Right, everything is set up. Uh, I'm ready to put, I'm ready to mix the resin and do the pour. Uh, the only thing I haven't quite got are the uh, proper stirrers for these three smaller colours. Uh, so I'm going to be making use of pencils for in the meantime. Uh, I have tarred these off. This is a new learning for me. Um, Loads of people mentioned it in the last comment. They said tar the scales, it makes it much easier. And I thought they it was predictive text gone wrong and they meant zero the scales, which obviously I understand. But I Googled it and yeah, tar basically means to, oh, going quick enough. Uh, tar basically means to zero the scales. Right, so I'm going in for a surface of 0.5 of a meter, which is 667 grams. Now I'm gonna mix the pigment, give me a little bit more working time. This is graphite black, 0.5 of a gram or a pea sized scoop. Okay. tough because the re resin is quite stiff. Okay. That's quite cool. But what I'm going to be particularly interested in is what this is like for a, a kitchen worktop. Obviously it's designed for it but obviously heat resistance is something. Scratching is another thing. So let's see. Right now I can tar the scales. Uh, okay, this is the base mix I'm mixing. So once this is done, I can then pour a little bit or decant a little bit into these mixers and then make the highlights. Right, stopwatch at the ready because this goes on as soon as the hardener goes in. Three, 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 bang on. Cool. This 
to obviously make it go more opaque. Uh, it looks like there's a lot of bubbles in this. Obviously it's more translucent. I'll take them off, that's annoying. Uh, it's more translucent than the primer coats. So obviously you can see it more, you can see all those bubbles more. Look at that, it's translucency. That is really quite see-through. And that's what I'm saying about seeing all those blemishes and all the scuffs made by the sandpaper. Right, two minutes in, let's start decanting. So I'll tar that. Um, right, for the base mix, I now want to make stone. So that is 40 grams of the base mix. Let's do that. Oh, shit. I haven't double potted. Whoa, that was close. Dilly dally. Well, that's not going to be fully well mixed, but luckily I double cut them all. Tar that. I have a feeling I'm going to be massively overusing the word tar. 40 grams of the base mix. That'll do. Uh, 20 grams of the base mix. Tar. Okay. And 20 grams. Cool, right. Tar them off. Right, now I've got to make gold which is oh, just a little bit of gold pigment by eye. Yeah, that's pretty cool. Five minutes in. Right, this one here uh, is uh, bronze. So this is a bottle of the bronze shimmer by eye. Nice and metallic. That's pretty cool. Okay. And now this is stone, and this is a mix of super white and gold. Three grams of each. Gold. Okay, and then mix. And then you can adjust the color of the stone, which make it a bit more kind of darker, I think, by adding the gold. But I'm pretty happy with that, it's quite a nice color. Seven minutes in. Okay, let's start mixing all this. Have I got all those done? Yes, that's all correct. Okay, let's start doing this. So really, I need to be getting the resin all down within about 30 minutes, all on surface. Then I can do a few other bits and pieces and leave it alone within one hour. So I've still got plenty of time. No need to kind of rush and panic. But pretty mad to think all of that is just going on these little bits. So, oh, oh my god, this is going everywhere already. Right. You kind of don't want to go right to the edge just yet. Right, let's see how I'm doing with that one. Right, 
remove that for a sec and get the notched spreader. Gives you an idea now as to how much resin is on there. Start moving that all around. Already, I'm not doing it like they did it in the videos. So, um, right, let's start to put in some colour and stuff. What's the main one? It's that one there, is in stone? Uh, well, I'm just testing this. It's not not really to see full design, but the idea is you can kind of drag bits like that. And you can put some bits in like this. I think my act like thing is going to be all in one way. I don't want it too busy. This is called cosmic black granite, right? And I think, oh my god, that's a bit swirly. I think it can be more more cosmic than granite, i.e., a bit more kind of starscape than granite and I'd rather it look a bit more well I think I'd rather it look a bit more granity than starry okay but that's the idea of this really is to kind of work that out I think I should be modeling all this together a bit more just start to Blend it up. I can see kind of patterns in the resin, which to be honest, looks like in, the, in just in that graphite, I think it's because I didn't mix it thoroughly, but even that looks pretty cool. Right, this it's one of these things really, it's about design that you can't, in a way you can't really go wrong, although I quite like the look of that already. And there's a few techniques apparently for doing all this. So you can mottle it in like that with a brush. I've already got a leak under there. That's no good. It was at this moment I didn't realise my right hand was drizzling resin and ruining my design. Yeah, that is kind of bulging out quite a bit. Um, okay, now let's go for a little bit of bronze. Don't really know how this would be. see. This is the bit where I kind of don't really think it's that granity. This is a bit more cosmic than granite, so we'll see. Although that looks pretty cool, I guess I did research thousands and thousands of different types of granite and various kind of formations of the stone and have a look at and there is a, a, an insane variety there really is it's kind of quite plain looking stuff and then there's really kind of colorful granite and really busy granite so really kind of feel like you can't you can't go too wrong in a way i don't know we'll find out where are we time-wise? Quarter of an hour gone. I've got plenty of time. This is this is fine. Obviously, this is quite a small area in comparison. Um, now let's start to mottle it a little bit with the hair dryer. So I have it on the cold setting by pushing the button in. Yeah. 
you can really disturb the resin quite a lot. And that's a bit too much. Now resin goes off quicker in a pot than it does in the open. So I do, if I'm going to use some of this stuff, I really do want to kind of get it out there now. I'm just now looking to see, because obviously I've been chucking things around and there's a few bits which look just like really unnatural. So I'm just making sure I'm touching them up. No, I'm not really happy with this one at all. This just looks way unnatural. To be honest, this pencil works quite well. Um, now, the other thing you can do here is shake on a little bit of the powder. You see there, it kind of, you don't want to put a lump of it on, but it kind of looks like little dots and it's broken up and made it look a little bit more rocky. The other thing I want to test with all this is, if you like, how boring the black is. The bits here where there's no resin at all, or no pigment, no colouring. Oh my god, I'm losing quite a lot of resin out of that bit there. Um, let's put on some more tape. It might just find its way out somewhere else, but it might just give me enough time but it's kind of thicken up. Right, how much time have I got? Talking of time. 22 minutes gone. So I've still got half an hour to go before I really need to be leaving this alone. So let's start doing something with these lines here. Right now, you'll see here I've got a problem because, because of the pore there, there's obviously a gap and it's pulling all the resin in, which is obviously not a look you'd get on granite at all. That's just completely unnatural. So this is a problem. The only thing I could do is potentially, I mean, look, there's a lot of resin there. I could tip it up slightly um, by wedging underneath there, but it might just save it slightly. But that's why I mean, it's as level as it can be. I just, yeah, now I've got to really kind of try to fix that. Well, I mean, I don't, I feel it was the main piece, I would have to fix it. All right, it's now dripping down there. But this is part of the test is to work out how this masking tape is really working. I'm gonna have to do a better, much, much better job. I think duct tape possibly but you need it to be easy to remove. Although this one here isn't leaking a drop. So that was a much rougher cut. So I'm guessing that must be it. There's just little gaps in the, in the resin. So I just gotta make sure my sides, my edges are absolutely perfect, which I think they are. So I reckon I can probably learn from that. That's okay. Not much I can really do about that. All I don't want it to do is fall on the floor. Obviously it's not going to go onto that work surface there because it's all protected. Um, but I'm thinking that's it. Let's just pour in a little bit more on this, this one here. That is half an hour gone. And from first appearances, I haven't mixed the, uh, the resin very well. It's better on that one. This is going to be interesting. That was the matte finish. I mean, it's totally different. This one actually looks incredible because it's not that solid black. 
this one looks amazing. Wow, okay, so let's just, I mean, there are very few air bubbles in there from what I can see, but I'm gonna do it anyway. Oops. I'm going to leave that for another kind of hour and a half ish. I'll come back on, come back and check on it. But that's all encapsulated now, ish. Okay, right. Let's clean up. Okay, it's been about half an hour. Um, right, it's quite a lot of resin on this. I have a feeling I've stuck my boards to everything, but um, what I want to do is just kind of see how kind of see how elastic the resin is still. You see here, I've got to peel off that edge soon, and there's quite a lot of resin trapped in that radius. You take it off too early, all the resin will just fall off, and all that pattern will completely go. So you've got to time this correctly. So it's not there yet. So I'll cover this back up. Oh, I've just dropped the thing in there. Um, hmm. Okay, let's see what impact that has. Right, leave it alone, James. I'm fairly encouraged by this in a way because the straight line reflection you can see, which is the Traxor line, um, is nice and straight in the reflection which means that the surface of the resin is flat right it's been about an hour and a half now since i finished working on the resin so it's two hours in total since the hardener was mixed with the resin so it should be at a time now where i can take the masking tape off the edges and let the resin roll down the edges unless of course on this one it's already rolled off and it's gone everywhere can't see that being the case just yet but oh, i hate these things so let's have a look see well okay that's not very good still quite off still quite a lot of uh, movement in the resin. Oh, I don't really want to ruin my track. Wow. Huh. Okay, so let's take off the tape. Say so I think there's a bit of movement still in the resin. I'm not, not a million percent sure. I'll just drop it in that. Uh, so there's a little mark in the surface of that now. Let's see what happens with it. Right. I 
Okay, this one, if you remember, didn't have a nice edge to it, so it was not easy for the resin to roll over on that one. I'm hoping on this one it will be easier because I've put a slight bevel on the uh, radius. So I'm hoping on this one here, it will flow. I'm making a bit of a piece here of this. Oh wow, yeah, I'm making, oh, but it's definitely flowing. So obviously the edge of this one is not good, but the edge of this one was a little bit more how it would be on the actual surface. And you can see there, it's without me doing anything, it's starting to go over. Now I'm, okay, it's a bit more on that side. Maybe it was slopey a little bit too much here. I don't really know what I can do to adjust this now. It's definitely a little bit stern down. I just don't want the whole pattern to move too much. One thing I'll say, I mean, this is an awful test piece, to be honest, because I didn't black, I didn't put the primer on the side. So when it does cover it a bit like that, it's not going to be a full indication of what it's going to be like. So I think this is starting to pull as I'm looking at it. I think it's all starting to go this way now. I mean, that's like a constant pouring of resin there. This is why they call it a dirty pour, but I think it's just basically pulling all the resin off there. So I'm going to have to prop it up on this side somehow to stop that happening. This one is a little bit, it's falling down, it's all being pulled down here, but I think that was mostly done before because there's no, there's not that much drips coming off this one. It's all coming off the front of this one here. So yeah, I'm going to have to, change that i think i can see the resin moving as i'm talking when i blew that dust on this one you can really see the impact that's had which i like that feature a lot that's really nice again you can see where the dust was blown on this one which it leaves really nice marks which does make it look much more stony I'm not sure if this is going to be picked out on camera, but I really like the fact that the black isn't completely black. There seems to be texture in there, which is really nice. And from a glance, you can see, I mean, the surface is really, really mirror flat. The self-leveling has definitely worked. I can't see any air bubbles. Obviously, I've definitely had problems with the sides and the levelling of this, that's for sure. It's falling off the back now, off this edge here a lot less. It's not running resin now really as much. Now I've propped it up slightly. Okay, so when it gets to the stage where the drips are non-continuous, then I know that it's not all falling off. I'm just going to leave this alone now. I'm fairly confident I've got it as level as I can. I don't think there's any resin running off it. So kind of 24 hours I can come back and see what it's like. Uh, so I'm quite excited by that. I'm really happy I did a test piece because I've learnt a load. If this was done on the main bit, I'd have been cacking myself. Uh, the main learnings for me were the masking of the edges. Obviously, I lost quite a lot of resin off that front board there uh, because the edges weren't perfect. Uh, on the main board, on this one here, the edges were really good, so I didn't lose much resin off that. Uh, and on the main actual worktops so I've, I've made, the e outside edges, the edges you can see, are brilliant. Uh, so I'm not gonna, I've got no worry about that. But the back edge, the bits you can't see, aren't as good. I've put a lot less effort into them, so I need to sort that out before I even go anywhere near uh, the main pour. The level of the worktop. Um, even though I use the spirit level and got it level, um, spirit level's got obviously a lot of tolerance in there. If you've got that bubble in the middle, there's still quite a lot of tolerance. And obviously if you put water on a surface uh, or resin on this, in, in this case, it needs to be absolutely perfect. So uh, the spirit level's not good enough, essentially. 
So what I'm gonna do on the next one, I'll use the uh, spirit level on my iPhone, which is super accurate, but also I'm gonna get myself a deck of playing cards and use them as shims because they're all uniform and they all can kind of raise little bits or lower little bits by microns. So that's gonna be uh, the way I'm gonna kind of try to tackle that problem. I'm now just gonna look forward to seeing what it's like when it's all gone rock solid. Right, it's been about 12 hours. Um, it won't have fully cured, obviously. I'm still gonna cover it up and leave it for another 12 hours just to fully harden. And I have learnt a lot from doing this. So I'm really glad I did the test piece. So, check this out. Look at that. That's um, pretty hard. In terms of my concerns for the actual top coat of it, if you like, um, that surface that you can touch, I was really nervous about it being full of bumps and everything, and it is really, really flat. It's really good, that's lovely. Uh, this one is stuck to that, but I can probably lift it up. I don't know if it's stuck to everything. No, but it's definitely stuck to that. Um, but, um, I mean, I just think that's so interesting. It doesn't look like granite. You can see when I took the tape off there, you can see that it, um, it all started flowing down. I mean, it's still quite interesting. The kind of shimmered effect you get from this is really, really interesting on the black. If I'm brutally honest, I, I, I think the, the black I really like more on this one than on this one. Um, some of these patterns though, I, they're okay. I reckon I'm gonna be doing the main coat predominantly in black. Maybe with a hint of something, because I really do like this. Some of the, some of the, I don't know, some of the patterning is just, and the, 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 the depths you can see from the different pores of resin, you can see bit, certain from different angles, you can see bits of physically, above the, the depth in this is amazing. And the edge, I mean, granted I didn't, um, this board wasn't very well prepped. So the edge didn't have the black color on it first as a base coat, but th that edge there where it's been beveled is just really, really nice to touch. It's super smooth. I, I quite like the idea of just more black and less of all the other stuff. Oh, look at that. It's a piece of art. That's just cool as. My anxiety about the surface of the primer coat has been allayed considerably because I can work it after it's all dried. This is, this is just so cool. I'm well happy with this. I said, I think black is going to be the way to go. Less is more. Less is more. Thanks for watching. Until next time. Take care. Bye-bye.